Mohammed Sanusi the second. Reformer. His, His Highness Khalifa Mohammed Sanusi the second. Reformer, banker, religious leader, public intellectual, father, husband, and overall ruffler of feathers. In 1980, Nigeria's GDP per capita on a purchasing power parity basis was $2,180. In 2014, it had risen by 50% to $3,099. According to the World Bank, where were we in 2019? 2,229. At this rate, in the next two years, in terms of purchasing power parity, the average income of the Nigerian would have gone back to what it was in 1980 under Shewu how many years? 40? No progress. Zero progress. 40 years wasted. Between 2014 and 2019, on the basis of this index of the purchasing power of the average income of the average Nigerian, we had wiped out all the progress made in 35 years. We have a responsibility as a people to rise and improve the life of the people of this country. It's no longer about the government, it's no longer about political parties, it's no longer about traditional rulers, it's no longer about emirs. The days are gone when you'll see one class of people, whether they're emirs or civil servants, cannot talk, or they cannot do this, or they cannot do that, those days are gone. When there's a fire in your house, everybody goes and gets a bucket of water. So, we need to understand economics as a people. I think we have little understanding of how economics works. We need to understand the implications of the choices that we are making. Because, you know, 70% of the problems we have in this country, from insecurity to herdsmen and firmer clashes, all of them have their roots in economics. It's about resources. Even this shout for restructuring for this, it's about resources. We need to grow this economy and make it work for the poor people. And since I wear two caps, and yes, I had the, this is a summary of my economic interventions. At the level of the North and at the level of Muslims, we need to look hard at ourselves and question the choices that we have made. And if we cannot make those changes, and you know, Ibrahim Ado spoke about a law, and Bashir Ali spoke about it. We got scholars in Kano to sit for three years to draft a Muslim code of personal status that begins to address some of these concerns. That law was ready in 2019. It has not been passed. I also sent it to the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, the governor of Plateau, and said, look, in case any state government wants it, give it to the governors. I have not heard anything back. We keep talking. 
about poverty in the north. We keep talking about al -Majere. This al I keep saying, did not produce themselves. I keep coming back to these issues. I know people don't like hearing them and they keep saying, You're, well, you've said enough. No, we will continue to say it and say it until people get to understand. <laughs> that if you cannot maintain one wife and you marry three, if you cannot maintain three children and you have 17, if you leave those children on the street, if you don't educate them, if you don't give them training, you're going to have them grow up into young men that will be a problem to our society. The youth that you see on drugs, those that go into stealing and kidnapping, they are all products of that social system. We have to ask ourselves, is this what Islam said we should have? Are these the children that Islam said we should have. The fears that we have are grossly unfounded. If you're told that you can go out, and as Kingsley said, when we started the banking reforms, I remember, on the eve of the banking reforms, every day, full page, front page of newspapers, the CEOs were at the villa. They were friends of the presidents. President after president, they were oligarchs. They were untouchable. I remember when we started going after the bankers, someone called me and said, you know, you're a young man, you don't know what you're doing. You will not succeed. What have we done today? So far, three, I think, or four of the wealthiest and most powerful bank CEOs in this country have gone to jail. And nothing happened. You know, you can fight any system. You don't need a large number. And people can have temporary power that they can use but the truth will always prevail. When I was suspended from the central bank, I gave an interview and I made a famous statement. I said, you can suspend a man, but you cannot suspend the truth. And this is the truth that has come out. This country, as His Eminence the Sultan said recently, this country has a problem. We can't ignore the fact that things are not working. When you are in a society that is so abnormal, you cannot afford to be a conformist. Because if we all conform, the country will not change. Many years ago, when I was screaming about the trillions being spent on fuel subsidy, I remember there was actually an attempt to attack my house in Kano. I was in the central bank. Where are we today? we are face to face with the reality that this is unsustainable. And when the decision is taken, it will be even more painful and much more difficult than if we had taken it 10 years ago or five years ago. Whenever I I'm seen to criticize. I simply speak to the best of my understanding and try to advise and try to say that which I think is in the interest of the country. I have been critical of economic policies and I've paid 
a price for it. But you know, the real price has been paid by the Nigerian people. It is a price we see in increased poverty. It's a price we see in increased insecurity. It's a price we see in a high rate of inflation. It's a price we see in the loss of the value of our currency. It's a price we see in the numbers around malnutrition, around unemployment, around out-of-school children, maternal mortality, and infant mortality. Calling me controversial or calling me an enemy or calling me a critic will not make those facts go away. And wherever we go, we must turn around and face those facts and that reality. So am I happy on my 60th birthday? No. Because 60 years ago when I was born, the United States government's advisory was telling investors that Nigeria had a better economic future than Japan. Where are we today and where is Japan? It's not about one government, it's not about two governments, it's about decades of a people throwing away opportunities. And every time we are handed an opportunity to change, every time we are given a chance to reset, we go back to the same old thing. Like the French say, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose.